Hi friends. Don't look at my band-aid. Do you like my new camera setup? Look at all this space. Anyway, it's time to mess up some more shrink plastic. I got this 3D jewelry kit and I'm pretty excited to try it. I'm not this excited though. I have better hopes for this kit because it's got these molds in it to shape the pieces. No more burning myself having to unstick twisted pieces. Why would you say that, you fool? Now you jinxed it. Opening the box, we have some fancy instructions, some pre-cut plastic pieces printed with different designs, this purple swirly pot mold for the bracelets, a pink heart-shaped mold to make smaller rings and loops, and a tiny set of pencils and jewels to decorate. Oh, and these jewelry pieces to make earrings. There's so many different designs to choose from, and I have a very strong too much gene, so I'm gonna try as many of them as I can. First, I'm gonna use the pencils in the kit to do these designs. Surprisingly, they did a pretty good job. The colors came out even and bright. Except for this one spot. I have no idea what that is. The only problem with these pencils is that they kept breaking and breaking and breaking. <laughs> Since the pencils in the kit work so well, pigment-wise anyway, I decided to try another cheap set of colored pencils. In the past, I've used fancy Prismacolor pencils, but for these designs, I just used some plain Crayolas. Then I decided to try Sharpies. I only have about seven random Sharpies that I've acquired somehow, and over half of them are some shade of pink. But since these are pretty abstract designs, I figured I'd try it out. Of course, I also had to do one set with paint markers just to see what would happen. What do you think is gonna happen, genius? First, I decided to work on the little ring loops. They have a hole on each end that attaches to the knobs on this little silicone form thingy. The instructions are very specific that after shrinking, you're supposed to turn the oven off and let everything cool down before you remove it, which would be fine if I were only shrinking one thing or if I had like five forms to do multiple at a time, but I'm not turning the oven on and off and waiting for it to heat and cool a bunch of times. I did wait until the plastic cooled and hardened before I took it off of the form, and I didn't see anything obvious that would have been different if I'd done it their way. Even with this little ring holder thing, I still had to rescue it a time or two to save it from twisting. For the most part, this worked as intended, but the rings came out with a sort of weird bend at the ends. So I started to wonder if this holder was actually doing anything besides holding the plastic in a circular shape. So I decided to try and jerry-rig it myself. I used a slightly unbent paper clip through the holes in the ends to keep it in a circle. It sort of worked. I mean, better for making earring loops than making a ring, but the mold didn't really make a great ring either. For the bracelets, there's this spirally mold that you put the plastic piece in and close it up with the lid. I baked this following their exact instructions, but it only came out half done. So I had to put it back in for a few more minutes until it was fully shrunk. It's pretty easy to look inside the mold and see if the plastic is thick enough without having to pull the bracelet completely out. So for the next few, I just left the lid off while it cooked. While this mold works much better than the smaller one, it makes bracelets way too small for my wrists. It must be for children or something. So I set out to make up my own technique again. Since it worked on the smaller rings, I decided to punch holes in each end of the bracelets and hook it with a paper clip. This worked pretty well, but it wasn't foolproof. The second try came out a little misshapen. So I adjusted my technique and put the bracelet mold in the center to keep the curve open. When it was still warm and pliable, I pulled it firmly around the mold for a few seconds while it hardened up. Now, I said firmly, but you can't do this too hard, because if you do, this happens. Whoops. That worked much better, but I wanted to open up the curve just a little bit more, so I made one final change and switched out the mold for a larger cup. Here's what everything looked like after shrinking. The ones I colored with the pencils in the kit came out nice and evenly colored. I wish I had shrunk these last because these were my favorite designs. 
Unfortunately, as much as the pencils broke, this is all I had left after coloring only a quarter of the designs. The ones I used Crayola on came out okay too. I had planned to paint the background white when it was all done, but most of them aren't really worth it. The Sharpie colored pieces actually look the best to me, especially this paisley looking one. It makes me want to buy a whole set of Sharpies and try shrink plastic charms again. The ones I did with paint markers look fine. They're boring, and that's my fault, so let's move on. Now, unfortunately, the ring mold wasn't great. In the set that I was really excited for, one came out twisty, so I couldn't use it to make earrings. I was able to get one matching set, and then I just grabbed two others that looked okay and stuck them together. The bracelet mold works if you have a tiny wrist, but it's just as easy to MacGyver your own setup. And since I opened up the curve to fit my giant wrist, they aren't going to stay on without a little help. So I added some beads to finish them off. Is this kit worth it? For a kid, sure, especially the bracelets. For a human over the age of 10, you're better off using items you already have. Would I try this again? Definitely. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.